Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for, I didn't write down the date, August 9th, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur or ham if you call want to call that radio. So, we are now diving into more of, uh, if you want to call it the meat of actual how to operate radio. So, we're in Chapter 5 now of the ARRL Tech License Manual. Uh, you can find that. At, um, I, I put a link to it on Amazon in the show notes. You can obviously find a lot of other places. So we're now diving into amateur radio equipment. And first we're going to talk about different modulation methods. Uh, So what is modulation? Modulation is what enables us to communicate information using radio signals. So that uh, modulation is just uh, different ways of incorporating the signal into radio waves. Um. So first, to kind of talk about bandwidth and what is bandwidth. Um, so we know from in the past, uh, reading through the book, that a, a, a frequency can have a strength and amplitude, and that signals are actually spread over. A, but now signals are actually spread across a wide range of frequencies. Some uh, signals are as little as three hundred hertz. And some are well over 3,000 hertz. Um, so I'll get in a little bit more in here than just in a minute here. Um, and then most of these modes ha- are, have a predefined bandwidth. And, uh, and in some cases, the FCC actually dictates how much bandwidth you can use. <clears throat> uh, the book covers... Uh, was it 60 meters? I think it is. And um, you can only use upper sideband at 2.8 kilohertz. Single sideband voice is 2 to 3 kilohertz. So, um, but the, um, they, the, the FCC actually, actually dictates on uh, that one, you, it has to be 2.8 kilohertz. Which technically uh, the single sideband does cover. I'll talk about single. What single sideband is? Just one minute. Um. So then the book starts talking about modulation and what is modulation. So they're still kind of building on this whole concept of modulation. Uh, so modulation adds information to the signal. Uh, so you start out with a a nice wave at um. Let's just say 142, 145 megahertz. Um, but that's just the signal. It's essentially dead air. Um, once you start adding modulation to it, now you're starting to add information, much like you can hear my voice right now. Um, a signal without information is considered unmodulated. Um, this modulation can be analog that where humans can actually hear it and understand it or it could be digital where it's not designed for humans to understand it but for computers to process it and then there's two basic kinds of modulation there's am and fm am much like your am radios in your vehicles and your stereos and of old of the um transistor radios and then you have the FM, much like your FM radios of today. They're much clearer, a lot more bandwidth to them, and so on. 
Now let's kind of talk about some of the different variations of modulation. So so the most simplest form of modulation is uh, using dits and dots, they call it, and otherwise known as uh, continuous wave or as they call it in in, uh, ham radio world, CW. If you don't know what that means, CW is Morse code. So you have a dit for the the dot and a da for the line. So um, it, you're no longer required to learn um, Morse code before you can take your technician license. But a lot of people learn it after getting the license and uh, actually enjoy it. I'll probably look at trying to do that, but I, I just can't wrap my head around it right now. Um, so, and then the next, uh, type of signal is amplitude modulation, otherwise known as AM. Um, that varies, that, uh, it adds a signal by varying the power and the amplitude of a signal. Um, so that's how that works. It's, it's adjusting the amplitude in the modulation. It is, uh, that's how it works. And then we uh, there's a, a newer form of AM, if you want to call it that, where if you take the AM signal and you slice it in half and you'll only send half the signal, now you're on single sideband. Um, and they divide it into upper sideband and lower sideband. So in some areas within the frequency, you are expected to use lower sideband. In other areas of the frequencies, you're expected to use upper side band. And that all com- comes into the band plans and so on that they have established. And the book kind of briefly touches upon some of that. Um, the next type of modulation is frequency and phase modulation, otherwise known as FM. And then they also throw in this PM thing. Um, that is how you, uh, I didn't put right down my notes exactly how it works. So this one is actually carrying or uses uh, frequency and phase in order to add signal into the uh, transmission. Um, in a lot of cases, especially in this book, they use them universally. In fact, they uh, directly say in here that from here on out, when we are talking about this type of signal, we're just calling FM. We're not even calling PM for phase, phase modulation. Um, And then they have a nice little table towards the end of this section where they talk about how much bandwidth each of these things require. Uh, one thing they point out is that uh, SSB is single, so single sideband is p- quite low in its bandwidth and can travel a lot further. So a lot of these sig- uh, transmissions being done, long distance record breaking transmissions that I've talked about with the uh, UA, uh, VHF was probably over single sideband because it travels a lot further. Um, and then technically CW is even further than that because it's much even lower of a bandwidth. So you're driving that signal a little harder with more po- with the same amount of power, but you're focusing within a much lower um, bandwidth. So CW or Morse code uses approximately 150 hertz. A uh, single sideband digital uses somewhere between 500 to 3,000 hertz. Uh, side, single sideband voice is 2 to 3 kilohertz. Um, AM voice uses 6 kilohertz. AM broadcast uses 10 kilohertz. And FM voice, a little more dynamic, to, uh, a little bit more uh, signal going through at 15 to 15. That's that, that, right. 10 to 15 kilohertz, and then FM broadcast uses a, a, quite a bit at 150 kilohertz. And I didn't include this one in the show notes, but they also talk about commercial video broadcast. So I'm guessing that's your over the air TV is six megahertz. 
So if you start really breaking it down, if you pick, um, let's just say 145 for a frequency, if you're s sending out an FM uh, voice broadcast, you are using anywhere from that 10 to 15 kilohertz. So you're technically dropping, well, let's just keep it at 10 kilohertz, five kilohertz under and five kilohertz over. This becomes more important as you start hitting these edges of your spectrum because if you butt your radio right at the edge of your um, your uh, allowed bandwidth, technically you are broadcasting outside of your allowed um, allowed uh, bandwidth or allowed uh, frequencies. So you got to be careful, especially when you get out to the edges of what you're transmitting, because you could uh, um, accidentally, I guess, be broadcasting out over um, non-licensed frequencies just because you centered it right at the very edge. Um, the other thing uh, with this, and they kind of mention it in here, um, if you're below 10, 10 megahertz, the lower sideband is being used in the single sideband, typically. If you're above 10 megahertz, that's when you're usually using upper sideband, and that includes the U UHF and VHF bands that they, for if for people who are using USB modes. Um the one exception is uh, you are required to use upper sideband on all five channels of the 60 meter band. So when I got talking about band plan, uh, I know that's in a later chapter. Um, 60 meters is extremely different, if you want to call it that. So you have to program your radio exactly in the spot that's all you're allowed to transmit on, it has to be upper sideband. And at most, I think it's 200 watts. I can't remember. Uh, 100 watts. So at most, you can transmit at 100 watts. And that is if the frequencies aren't being used at that time. So it's extremely picky, but that's the cost of using that particular band. And then 30 meters is a little bit different too, but. Word technician, well, we're looking at the technician. You don't really have access to those anyway. That comes into when you're a general. Um, I think that is it for tonight. Um, I was hoping to um maybe try and do an FM transmission, but I don't think that's going to be possible tonight. I will try and get one recorded here. Um, I know I did one for my regular uh, show I do, but um, I'll try and get a um, FM transmission recorded here in the ne next day or two, just so I can kind, of, just so you kind of have an example of what it sounds like, um, so you can kind of hear how clear it is. And um, like I said, I'll, I know really soon they're talking about nets, um, so I might just record like Sunday night net. And then you can actually really hear it better there. And you got to remember that's FM voice. That is, um, that's what you, these little handhelds usually are. So um, that's a little bit to be looking forward to. Um, I thought I seen transmitters, digital communications in two days. I am going to have to record a digital transmission as well so you can hear what that sounds like, at least for, the D for DMR. Um, I will also be, I should also, when we get to digital especially, I will share a link to a video. In fact, the, the entire video series is good um, for um, samples of listening to these digital modes because that starts putting reality into how this all works. So uh, once again, we're up to 15 minutes. So we're going to wrap this up here. So I want to thank everyone for listening. I It sounds from what I've been hearing, people are really liking this and hearing a little bit about ham radio along the way. So um, thank you so much for listening. And uh, until tomorrow, this is 73 for, 
or 73 from WX0MIK. And yes, I will explain what the whole 73 is here coming up in one of these chapters. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK. 73.